ね。This was Rose, man. Oh, welcome. Thank you for coming. Yeah. I was um, mostly interested in uh, your opinion on um, DNA resonances. Yes. Uh, obviously, it's not something that you studied, but it is in line with, your, with the field of your study. You looked at uh, uh, the, how the X-rays are interacting with DNA and resonating with it. So, now, uh, uh, my interest is the same thing, just not X-ray, it would be some other frequencies, and it would be in living body doing biological biological uh, work. So that's, that's the main subject of my research. I wonder if you could give any insight into that. Well, there's resonations with everything, every kind of energy, that comes in contact with DNA has some kind of effect on it. Um, X-rays had a greater effect on it than some other energies. So that is why it was of interest to us. Um, it became a, because we could see the reaction better with X-rays and so we are able to research it easier with the X-rays. Does that make sense to you? Yes, thank you, yes. But you must understand that um, we use many kinds of energies to interact with DNA, but since we could not measure some of the reactions properly, we had to use that which was most evident and measurable. No, no, my question is, can you help me with, uh, with the biological communication between parts of DNA? I'm looking how A, G, C, and T, how the letters of DNA, how they uh, resonate with each other using biological fields. How they resonate with one another. Uh -huh. well, they work together, of course. It's like a chorus. You cannot, uh -huh. if you do not want dissonance, so you get two together that make harmony. So therefore, as you work with these different elements, they are harmonically designed to work with one another. So therefore, your energy will find, you will find that when the AC is working to, uh, is in, interacted with, it will have a certain harmonic resonance. Yes, That's yes, yes. So I'm, I'm trying to model those uh, oscillations or those resonances, those waves. And uh, it looks like they're forming a very pretty uh, spiral, uh, spiral oscillation. So the energy goes into spirals and uh, sometimes these are spirals of the shape of DNA and sometimes they would be perpendicular to the shape of DNA. And sometimes they, they would make... They need uh, to be in the spiral shape so that the energies within that the helix is attached to one another more easily. If they are in a flat linear line, they could not uh, communicate as well. But since they are in a spiral, they can attract one another and draw energy from one side to the other and resonate more accurately than if they were in a linear setting. This is what we have discovered, that they speak to one another in very specific algorithms and very specific energy types, some of which energy types we could not identify. Uh -huh, that's, that's my question. Yeah, which energy types would that be? Yes, there were some energy types that were undistinguishable or unnamed because we did not properly know exactly what they were. We, we had an idea they could have, we could have given them names, but if they were improperly named, then they would be um, uh, 
refuted eventually. So it's best not to be unsure. Right. Um, um, the gamma, yeah. there is also gamma radiation uh, obvious in uh, evident in the DNA. Uh huh. And there is uh, beta, beta, what is it called? Beta, um, beta rays. Yes, I'm sorry. Beta rays also obvious in the, the resonations, but they are in such small quantities. We wonder how they are working interactively one with another, but there is all the energy you can imagine working together there, but some are greater than others. As the x-ray showed, they have, the x-ray was able to cause greater activity within the DNA than some of the other energies that were given to testing. Uh huh. Yeah, we uh, we look at the DNA uh, at the effects of their uh, different waves on the living systems, and it looks like sound frequencies are pretty important. And uh, yeah. sound, yeah. sound. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Sound frequencies as uh, mechanical oscillations, basically real sound, and then same frequency just as electromagnetic oscillation. So. Uh, yeah. In one case, it would be molecules oscillating, and another case, it would be uh, electromagnetic field oscillating, but molecules staying in place. Correct. So, so sound and frequencies. Brain, and when it speaks to the brain, it speaks to the neurons. Uh huh. So it speaks to neuron activity and synapse. Uh huh. Directly. And Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, synapse is at the end of the axon and uh, uh, the DNA is in the nucleus. So there should be, they cannot be direct. It could be, uh, there should be some carrier. And we think it's microtubules that carry the oscillation between the nucleus and the synapse. Well, yes, of course. But it's, that's what it was, it's directly set to affect the synapse. Hmm. Do you think synapses are oscillating at uh, sound frequencies? I don't think it is shown ever. No, it's never been shown that way. It's more, it's more um, shown as an electrical charge. Yeah, yeah, like there is an action potential which travels through uh, an axon and then reaches the synapse. But yeah, that's one of the questions we ask. How would electromagnetic uh, uh, wave transfer from one uh, neuron to another. There would be a synapse on the way, and uh, I don't think there is any transference of um, a wave shown through the synapse. I don't think it is ever shown. So, uh, no, we but think it's the the key is the neuron. Yeah, but the neurons touch each other through synapses, and that's that's yes. you know the. The transference, the, 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 I mean, there is a break between uh, microtubules in one, microtubules in one neuron and microtubules in another neuron. So, Correct. And then uh, uh, the synapse in, uh, is on the way. So we, we wondered how would the oscillation uh, transfer and how would the information be transferred. It, if it goes through chemical messages like dopamine and serotonin, it would be too slow and too sloppy. You would lose a lot of messages. So there should be some more direct transfer of information which you don't know how it works. It is, it is that, I am telling you that there is a, a reaction in the neuron as well that gives the information. Uh -huh. The neuron yeah. has more than one kind of energy that it can use just as the DNA, because if it was only one kind of message causing the synapse, then there would always be the same reaction in the, from, the, from that particular synapse 
whereas some synapses are used for several different activities or functions. Okay. Um, one of the thoughts which, which we had on that direction was that maybe the information is transferred not through neurons, but through um, connective tissue. There are microtubules in the connective tissue. And apparently it is a path, uh, it is a path which is used by uh, Chinese, uh, traditional Chinese uh, meridians, right? traditional Chinese acupuncture meridians. Yes, but those are only receptors. Those are only receptors and they receive the information and they pass, and yes, they can pass that on to something else. But you, yes, the neuron gives them the information, but they are receiving through the, through, through synapse and through the, 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 what you mentioned, that they can send that out through there. They can receive different informations from different energies given to them by the neurons. Uh-huh. Right, good point. So the connective tissue is passive compared to neurons which are more proactive. Maybe. Correct. Correct. Um, but a lot of, uh, I mean, the acupuncture works mostly on that, mostly on the connective tissue. So, so it Correct. is important. Because they are receptors. Okay. Uh, one of the uh, questions which uh, is in my mind lately is uh, uh, we assume that the waves form a morphogenic field. Uh, morphogenic field is defined as a field which is shaping the body, shaping the body and shaping the organs, creating the shape of the eye, of the body, of the head, of everything. So there is a field. And we think it is created by the DNA and microtubules, but mostly by DNA. But uh, so far, I don't know good examples, good experimental examples that it is true. It's most, mostly a theory which is not proven yet. So I wonder where to look for the proof that the shape of the body depends on the, on the waves. You would have to check with the zygote in the mother's womb. This will give right. you many clues to where the first energies are started and formulation begins. Exactly. Yep. Yep. That's where we go. And it would tell you that if you look at the child as it is first being developed, it uh -huh. looks like a small bean, a legume. Uh -huh. And so it is all one, all the communication is within this small area and uh -huh. it is formulating how and all the reasons um, and all the time settings for these uh, for this particular uh, entity to form right, and, right. and so it it's actually a, an am amazing algorithmic game mm -hmm. within the the center of the uh, the DNA system, it calculates uh, all the different things. It calculates the actual size of the zygote and puts everything into perspective from that time on. You see every zygote is completely unique. All, every zygote is different sized as it, it's within its first couple of weeks. It changes uh -huh. sizes and sometimes Immensely so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that is where the information, we tried to study uh, the zygote as well. It was not, we, it was sort of a secret project because um, it was frowned upon to work on mm -hmm. uh, human zygotes, but we used other zygotes from other animals. Mm -hmm but still find that uh, the chemicals uh, the chemicals being released at earliest points in zygote were very similar i'm and more interested in uh, in the waves in the waves we didn't study the waves i uh, like um one of the ideas is that there is a, 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 an electrical activity during the conception, 
and also yes. the electrical activity during the yes development of the of the of the fetus in the in yes. the in the womb and the shape of the womb is uh, similar to an egg so i'm just wondering if an egg and the uh, shape of the mother's oh, body are Yes. somehow influencing the fetus uh, through the waves and what absolutely. kind of waves would that be? That is absolutely right, yes. Um, just like every planet has its own size of electromagnetic field, if they even have one, they have very similar kinds of waves, but they're all different. This will happen inside the zygote as well. The formulation of the electromagnetic waves around it and the formulation of the electrical system within it also has some uh, action or has something to do with the waves that are around it. I'm sure you already know that. Um, I guess that. I mean, we don't have any proof yet. Well, that is, uh, that's logical. Uh-huh. It is logic and it will be proven. Uh huh. So I'm looking for ways to find any proofs uh, around, like how do the waves affect the development? There is not much done yet on that. No, there is not much study on the waves as um, how they affect uh, the development of the zygote and the actual frame of and the internal working but you understand that it is a form of communication. These waves communicate uh, information to all the different uh, areas of the body as it is so small, and it resonates with or activates certain areas with certain kinds of waves. Right. I, I, I'm trying to see... Um the future and yeah. how the uh, envision how the electromagnetic devices could be developed to help to change the shape of the body and to yes, regenerate, regenerate the new organs like limbs and uh, kidney, Wait, spleen, you... uh, liver and um, this and carefully. Mm -hmm. There are places that are developed in the brain, in the brain that do these things, but they must be activated. So waves, you would, don't, would not send it through the body to have extra limbs grown, but send it to the brain to activate that area of the brain that can actually send the information to that area to create a new body. Wow, that's an, an unusual idea. I didn't think about that. Yes. What it is is this. Your brain, you only use about 10% right now. And why do you think there is so much left over? It is for your development, for your evolution. And there are places in the brain that activate telekinesis, psychic energies, uh, growing new limbs and things of these natures that have not been activated yet. They are not mature yet in your development. Uh huh. So, so you must uh, understand uh, the brain is the central and controller of what happens in the body. You cannot send a wave through the body and create a new limb but you can open a place in the brain if they knew exactly where it was that could regenerate new limbs. Wow. Yeah, how do you go about it? You would have to find, first of all, find this place in the brain that needs activated. And in some cases, it would need to be, um, it would need to be sent into time a little bit because it's not mature yet. It would have to uh -huh. be matured by energies, but uh -huh. it can be done. You know what? Uh, I think the theory about brain locations is uh, sort of outdated. It looks like nowadays, it looks like uh, the information and the functions are distributed in the brain. They go uh, all yes, around the brain. Are. 
but there is one there is one area that must be activated differently than all the rest to create that particular function so brain areas are still important in the future they will find that the computer works the brain as a computer works like a regular computer there are places in the brain that can have effects that other places do not and if they are not activated that activity will not happen do 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 you see a way how how that can be activated should we is it through acupuncture type of work or is it well the thing is this my friend is that because uh, the parts of the brain that are not activated get very little energy uh -huh. it is you they cannot see that they have that particular function and placement because uh -huh. they have not activated these they try to activate these places and they are not mature enough to be activated so what they need to understand is the brain has to develop and if they can find a way to speed up the development of the brain so that you can use more of it then they would see that activation is possible for many different things um i'm a little lost how can someone uh, uh activate the maturation of the certain parts of the brain yes, like it is like, not possible yet. Like, like the dogs. We have no. the dogs, which we have the dogs, which are uh, undeveloped adult wolves. So the dogs are made from wolves by uh, freezing their development. And I don't know. Is there a way to unfreeze it and make a wolf out of a dog or a more developed human out of the modern human? Yes, it's a... <laughs> you just have to find where it is located in the brain, which you have not done yet. Uh huh. And then, what would be the method? How would, uh, physically or chemically, how would we induce the, the maturation or development? You see, what the other thing you do not understand is there are many kinds of energies that run everything, and you must find the right energy that feeds this particular area of the brain. And so therefore, this energy that feeds this particular area of the brain may not be something that you commonly use when working with DNA or brain. However, it would be more active because uh, in that area because of the way it was designed. The brain is designed to be activated through evolution. All right. Uh, yes, you, uh, that conversation with you was very helpful. I, I got uh, I got a lot out of it. Um, I, I need to close in five minutes. And uh, my usual question is, do, did you have any uh, alien experiences or uh, spiritual par paranormal experiences in your life? I did not have time for aliens when I was alive. And I did not believe in them even. I mean, uh -huh. while I might have believed they existed, I didn't have any interest in them. So uh -huh. I did not have any activity with them at all. You were friends with Francis Creek. Uh, and yes. he, he, was, uh, he came up with the idea of panspermia, basically that the life was brought to Earth from the space uh, yes. in the form of DNA. So he was very much into, into the uh, universal thinking. Oh, yeah. I believed he was correct, but we were not studying outer space, so I had to confine my thoughts to my studies and to my experimentation, which left uh, outer space out of my loop completely. And how about paranormal experience and spiritual experiences? Did you have any? I was very third dimensional, unfortunately. I wish that I had more experience in this area, but I did not. Uh-huh, and uh, you were also not very much communicative with, uh, at least in, in UK, you weren't very much communicative with people. Is it because your soul was an alien or just just because you didn't like Englishmen? No, I was 
more reserved. I did, I did studies. My brain was my success, not my mouth. So I kept it shut because sometimes I would get in trouble. Uh -huh. I, would say, I would be much too blunt with the men and they would be very upset with me. So I learned to be a little more quiet. Uh huh. Because so I, thought they were, I thought many times they were asinine on some of the directions they would take. And I would, uh, and they would actually listen to me eventually. So you, you, you want an extraterrestrial in the human body? I don't think so, no. Uh huh. And um, uh, the time when you were alive, how, uh, how much did you understand the importance of your discovery? I was hoping that it was very important, but I didn't know how important it was until I left this place. Uh huh. Because you went pretty far, but uh, you were very grounded. You were the most grounded out of, out, of, uh, out of the four scientists who discovered it. Yes, and that's why I had to be a little bit more nasty at times. Uh, I would bet you were uh, 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 an earth sign or a zodiac, zodiac earth sign, but I'm, I don't remember yet. <laughs> and I don't even know what sign I was. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, thank you very much. At that point, I uh, I have to I have to close up. And thank you very much. It was nice to discuss with you there uh, the science parts. It was very helpful. So I would invite you for sure. I would invite you more. Please bring more uh, insights into the into the question of um, of the practical applications of the waves and how to basically crack the code there. The wave code there is the code of the DNA. We're not allowed to crack it for you, but we are allowed to give you hints. And Thank I, you. I've given you some. Thank you much. This was, this was very uh, unusual and helpful. Yes, I remember them. Mm -hmm. that, yes. Very well, my good luck to you. And I'm sorry I do not speak very well, but that's all right. That's all right. Goodbye for now. Goodbye for now. Thank you. <sighs> Hello. Hey, Jim. Welcome back. Thank you. Did you have a good